As presider is Most Reverend Pablo S. Virgilio David D.D., Bishop, Diocese of Caloocan, CBCP President. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, I know that I have been invited by the clergy of Gumaca to preside and preach at the funeral mass for Bishop Vic, but uh, sadly, uh, there is one schedule I could not possibly postpone. So I chose to come here and join him as a kabalen here in Angeles City. I would like immediately to express my condolences to the family of uh, Bishop Vic, who was a dear friend 
a brother at San Jose Seminary and a fellow bishop. Let us now begin this celebration by humbling ourselves before the Lord and begging for forgiveness for our many shortcomings. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Victor, to whom you committed the care of your family, may, with the manifold fruit of his labors, enter into the eternal gladness of his door, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down, relent in punishing, punishing your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, on how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, 
terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, if I testify on my behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf but you have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe 
my words. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, may pabengi po kaya kayo yan. I'd like to begin by thanking Holy Angel University for welcoming the mortal remains of uh, Bishop Vic to this uh, beautiful chapel of the Holy Angel University. Before I say anything about Bishop Vic, let me first do what Bishop Vic would expect me to do at this homily, namely, to reflect on our readings. And you must have noticed that I used the readings for the day, this um, Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. I wonder if you are familiar with the Chinese saying that goes in Kapampangan, potang tuturuke ke kaing bulan, eme sana panintunan king taliri ning tuturu. In English, when someone points at the moon with his finger, do not try to find the moon on his finger. Of course, the finger is just a sign, a sign that is meant to direct your gaze towards the moon. And the moment you have seen the moon already, you don't need the finger anymore. <clears throat> well, this saying is about basic common sense, which they say, unfortunately, is not so common anymore. Apparently, this is because we tend to equate schooling with education. You see, not all people who are getting schooled are necessarily getting educated, especially if the schooling leads to a loss of common sense. And this basically is the point of our readings for today, Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. From the Gospel of John, chapter 5, 31 to 47, and from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 7 to 14. In the first reading, Moses is lamenting about the Israelite people who had seen all the signs and wonders that the Lord had done for them while they journeyed together in the desert for 40 years they saw they saw with their eyes they heard with their ears how God had made water flow from the rock when they were dying of thirst and how God rained down manna from heaven when they were starving and yet, there they were, dancing around the golden calf and worshipping this mute idol as their god. Well, this is also the point in today's gospel, where the gospel writer is pointing out that John the Baptist's whole mission in life was precisely to lead the people, not to himself, but to the one they had all been waiting for, the Messiah. But of course, unfortunately, like the evangelist says, he was like a bright light burning and shining. But 
the role of John the Baptist was just to serve as a precursor, to point to a greater light. He is like the moonlight, which is just a reflection of the sunlight. Alam naman natin, wala namang sariling liwanag ang buwan. It is reflected light from the sun. The gospel writer also criticizes those in Jewish society who knew the Bible, who knew the scripture so well, but they were unable to see God at work in their history. You know, in my younger days, I remember a poster that had been posted on the bulletin board of the Loyola School. That poster portrayed Jesus hiding behind a rock. And the professional theologians looking for him everywhere while a little child is right there at the foreground giggling and pointing at Jesus. Mas mabilis pa yung bata to find Jesus. And Jesus is smiling at the child and gesturing with his forefinger on his lips to tell the child to keep quiet. You know, we are about to celebrate Easter. And of course, you know that one of the Western rituals popularized about Easter is the Easter egg hunt, the search for the Easter egg. And I think it's just a kind of ritualization of the biblical motif of the search for the risen Jesus. Ang paghahanap sa Kristong muling na buhay. You remember that passage in the Gospel of John where the two apostles, Peter and John, raced to the tomb and they found the tomb empty. And how Peter was puzzled and confused while John took time to look around him and notice the linen cloth neatly folded on one corner of the tomb and he understood what it meant. Atina marugong clue for those who are intelligent enough to interpret the signs. And remember Mary Magdalene herself who was also looking for Jesus. She was already talking to Jesus but she was unable to recognize him. She was obviously prevented from seeing the risen Jesus because she was clouded with grief. And John tells us how Mary Magdalene is led to recognize Jesus only after Jesus calls her by name. Now let me relate this reflection to our dear Bishop, Bishop Vic Ocampo, our fellow Kapampangan. You know, not many bishops know that Bishop Vic is actually a Kapampangan because they've always known Bishop Vic as part of the clergy of Balanga in Bataan. They didn't know that Balanga used to be part of the Archdiocese of San Fernando. It's actually a child of the Archdiocese of San Fernando. And at the time when uh, Bishop Celso Guevara was trying to get started, you know, he just had a handful of priests there and was trying to find vocations. And Bishop Vic was one of the volunteers. I deliberately did not start with Bishop Vic because I know Bishop Vic, he would never want the Eucharist to be about him but about Christ. I think Bishop Vic took very seriously the admonition when he heard from the ordaining bishop from whom he first received the holy orders, when the ordaining bishop 
hands the book of gospels to the candidate at ang sasabihin niya ay receive the word of God whose herald you now are receive the word of God believe that Bishop Vic always regarded himself as a mere herald of the word of God when I was still acting as chairman of CBCP's Commission on the Biblical Apostolate, Bishop Vic was our most consistent supporter in the Biblical Apostolate. He was never absent from meetings. Long before he became a bishop, he was already the leading advocate of Biblical Apostolate in the Diocese of Balanga. You could always expect him to be there. And yet, Bishop Vic was fully aware that the Word of God in the sacred scriptures was but a finger pointing at the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ. We cannot say we already know the Word of God in the Bible until we have known the Word made flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. It was St. Jerome who once said, Ignorance of the Bible is ignorance of Christ. Bishop Vic took the rest of the bishop's admonition at ordination, which I earlier spoke about, very seriously. And that admonition, after saying, Receive the word of God whose herald you now are, it also says, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Meaning, it is not enough to read the Word of God. What is most important is to take it to heart, meaning to listen with faith. To believe but wait there is more the second line says teach what you believe meaning it is also just as important to share what you believe but the warning is yes teach what you believe but do not teach what you do not believe Teach only what you are convinced about. Teach only what you are willing to die for. Pero hindi pa rin siya tapos doon. There is still a third line that says, and practice what you teach. Isa buhay ang itinuturo. Meaning, it is not enough to believe it and to teach it. What matters most is to live it, to let the Word of God take flesh in us as it did with Jesus Christ. The mystery of the Incarnation goes on with us, with all of us who become disciples and who become part of the body of Christ. You know, Bishop Vic and I were together both in minor seminary and major seminary. Minor at the Mater Boni Concili, Mother of Good Counsel Seminary in San Fernando, Pampanga. I was among the small boys, he was among the big boys already. And at San Jose Seminary, several years apart, but I started in college, and he was there uh, already in theology. He was a big brother to me during my formation years. When the sad news about the passing of Bishop Vic was officially announced in our CBCP General Secretary or by our G General Secretary in our group chat, ating kami pung Viber group chat, all the bishops of the Philippines, when it was announced, a lot of words of uh, 
you know, condolences started pouring in. And I was surprised that several bishops mentioned that what they would miss most, miss most about Bishop Vic were his funny jokes. I wonder how it came about that Bishop Vic developed the reputation of being a joker in the CBCP. Most of them, I mean, most of his jokes were actually deliberately and unapologetically corny, which made them even funnier, especially because he told them with a poker face. Bishop Vic used to occupy only the third rank among our funny bishops, which include Apong Nes Ong Choco. He was number one. You know. And Bishop Francis de Leon. But, you know, he quickly rose through the ranks and became the first. At our last San Jose alumni homecoming, he performed like a professional stand-up comedian for almost 30 minutes. And most of his jokes were spontaneous. It's like they were being created right on the spot, you know. Not many of them knew what I knew. Not many of them know what I knew of Bishop Vic. That Bishop Vic was actually the serious type when he was a seminarian. In fact, he was quick to pick up serious ideas, but slow to pick up jokes. And it was common knowledge among us seminarians back then that if you told a joke to Vic, he would listen very attentively to you, trying to understand your points, and he would keep a very serious face long after you've given your punchline already. At ikaw na joke you feel like a miserable failure because you failed to make him laugh. But expect him to follow up on your joke the following day at breakfast. And he would be talking about it and now laughing heartily at the joke that you gave the previous day and which he understands only now. It means he spent the whole night reflecting on your joke and thinking what the point was. He was also like that with the scriptures. He never stopped until he got the point. Always he asked, what's the point? Kasi as they would say in Kapampangan, malyaring dimdaming amano ng ginu, pero may eme paikwa in amanuana ng ginu. How very clever of the Kapampangans. We make a distinction between amanu and amanuan. Amanu is the word but Amanuan is the meaning of it. The Word of God and the meaning of the Word are two different things. And that all people who listen to the Word are able to get what it means. We are talking here about the finger and the moon. And I imagine our dear Bishop Vic Ocampo, now quietly gazing at the moon with no more help from anyone's finger. Dear Bishop Vic, please pray for us who still depend on the finger to get to see the moon. Please 
God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, His Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask Him to save all His people, living and dead. For Bishop Victor, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother Victor, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Victor, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who help us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers, brother, Bishop Victor. Cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant and Bishop Victor, while in the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night, on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unhelping help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children is gathered through all the world. Remember your servant Victor, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you as at their passing from this life, give him admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from, from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Victor, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Risen Lord, pattern our life forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Promise an image of what we shall be. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God who came to destroy sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Word of God, who delivered us from the fear of death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, give peace to victor forever, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain, Bless Bishop Victor's family and friends who gather around him today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With God, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in grief and to receive Bishop Victor into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Bishop Victor his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever Amen. and ever. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. 
Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.